Welcome back. If there was a surprise in Tuesday's primary election, it might have been what happened in the 10th district, an open seat election as Paul Mitchell announced he's leaving Congress and he urged voters to support Shane Hernandez. Well, then a nasty campaign broke out between Hernandez and Lisa McLean. And when the dust cleared on Wednesday, it was McLean, a political newcomer, still standing. And she joins me for her first visit to Flashpoint. Lisa, first off, uh, congratulations on, on a big win. Thank you. Thank you so much. You bet. Tell me a little bit about what you think made the difference here. You uh, you really don't have any political experience. Shane Hernandez is known a, a little bit better in, in political circles, and he was endorsed uh, by uh, Paul Mitchell, who's leaving office. What do you think made the difference for you? Um, I think really three things as we uh, as I took a breath after Tuesday or early Wednesday morning is we had a good strategy. We had a phenomenal amount of support and help. So you, you can't get to this place, you know, a seat in Congress without a team. And I'm, I'm blessed and inspired and happy to say we had a lot of good help on our campaign. And the last thing that we had, I think, that helped us get here was we worked hard. So good strategy, team effort, and a lot of hard work. Well, clearly it was it was that. You come from a financial services background, started your own company, uh, but then you did spend more than a million of your own dollars on this uh, on this run. And I guess some would, why is it worth it uh, to you to spend that kind of money? And uh, is that uh, again a win for money over uh, politics? Well, I look at it as a, as an investment in myself. Um, I would prefer to invest in myself to do what I think needs to be done in this district to move the district forward. And number two, with my own money um, and the money that I've raised from, from the support with the, of the donors in the district is I'm not beholden to anybody, which I, I believe I can follow my heart and the heart and, and the mind of the district as opposed to being beholden to any special interest yeah. group. Um, then let's talk a little bit about that, uh, because in some ways, the if I, it was weird to think that some of those ads between you and Shane Hernandez, it was hard to believe that you were both uh, in the same party. It got pretty bitter, <laughs> but it also became a test over, in, in some ways, who was more loyal and aligned with President Trump. Characterize for me the job that you think that Donald Trump has done, and since he's fallen now in the polls to a double-digit deficit behind Joe Biden, what are your fellow Michiganders not seeing that you see? I think at times we get caught up in the packaging and we don't take a good long look at the policies and what people have, especially our president, I believe, have accomplished. And so many times we get personal and we get hung up on the person as opposed to the policies. And I think our president has has done a remarkable job with his policies. And that's the biggest reason why I support our president. And from my experience on the campaign trail, there's a lot of support for him out there. Um, I've seen it at the rallies. I've seen it when I've done phone calling, on door knocking. I don't see this big silent majority. I, I believe people are beginning to come out of the woodwork and at times when things get nasty and things get to crunch time, we focus so so much on the person and we, we personalize things and we attack things as opposed to spend our time, effort and energy on the policies. And I think well, his policies are good and they show. Let's talk about one of those policies. Uh, this uh, district, should you uh, defeat your Democratic opponent in November, you would be representing a district that is very largely uh, heavily agricultural. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, all those farms up in the thumb. Uh, my family farms soybeans in southern Illinois, and the president's uh, trade policies have pretty much devastated the soybean market. I'm curious as to if you had a chance to sit down with the president on behalf of the farmers that you would be now uh, representing. What would you tell him about uh, those trade policies uh, a, 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 on behalf of the farmers that you would be representing? Um, I, I believe it's important for Americans, whether it's in farming or any other facet of business, that our policies need to be fair and equitable for us. And I think that's what we really need to focus on because far, the farmers that I've met are good, true, loyal people, 
and all they ask for is a fair shake. And I believe what the president needs to do is make sure that we have a level playing field, get some of the regulation out of the way so that the farmers can do what they do best, and that is farm. And not only for the United States, but, but really for the world. And we need to focus on letting the farmers be able to do their job and do it well, but create a playing field that is a level playing field. Uh, most of the farmers I know would uh, rather be farming uh, than, than, than taking any sort of subsidy uh, check. Uh, 100%. The government, no Absolutely. Doubt about it. Uh, what would you characterize as you, uh, you've got an opportunity that few people get to come out of sort of a, a regular walk of life and walk into the nation's capital. What's your first order of business? I think my first order of business um, is to is to get the economy back up and running. Because if you have a strong economy, how do we do I that in the pandemic? Lot, I'm sorry. How do we do that in the middle of the pandemic? Well, I, I think I think we can, and I think we've shown that we are able to do that. So when it when we talk about this pandemic, I respect the coronavirus. There's no question. But I do not fear the coronavirus. And I believe in people, and I believe in businesses, and I believe in individual rights and individual liberties, where given people those choices, I believe people will be innovative, and I believe that they will, in a whole, do the right thing. Um, so again, I respect the coronavirus, but I don't fear it. And as Americans, we don't need to fear it. Lisa, um, really, I, I gotta, we got to leave it there. i got to get to a quick break. But really good to talk okay. to you. I know we'll talk to you more as we uh, head toward uh, the November election. Congratulations again, and thanks for Thank spending you. time today with us. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too.